good morning and so, uh, today's session is about we are going to learn about um, 8051 microcontroller architecture okay its register set and some important operational features now this is an important session so this session uh, um, uh, the first session only I will be presenting here next session we will continue in the next class so this one is a very important one uh, a most probable essay question so I will be presenting uh, all the important points here and uh, if you want you can brief it in your own way okay so this is a possible question for essay that is discuss in detail the architecture of 8051 microcontroller uh, with special description on its register set uh, control registers and uh, the important operational features okay so let's begin this is an introduction about 8051 microcontroller here there is nothing much to teach everything is written in simple words i have taken from uh, different textbooks so uh, you, this you can take the printout and uh, learn so 8051 as i said is a microcontroller designed by intel in 1981 it is an 8 bit microcontroller and it has got 40 pins dip dip means dual in line package so it is an 8 bit microcontroller with 40 pins its rom storage is 4 kb and ram storage is 128 bytes these are its specifications okay now it has got two 16 bit timers it has got four parallel 8 bit ports these ports are programmable about these ports uh, there is a separate session so that we will discuss in detail in the coming classes then it has also got an on inbuilt or an on chip crystal oscillator that provides a frequency for its operation of about 12 megahertz and some additional features are given here see it has an 8 bit cpu with register a and that is an accumulator you know a is uh, taken as the accumulator it's a register and it has got another register b then it has got some 16 bit registers namely program counter pc and data pointer dptr then another 8 bit program status word then an 8 bit stack pointer sp then internal room then or e pro erasable programmable read only memory then as i said before it has got an internal ram of 128 bytes then uh, uh, 32 input output pins and these pins are arranged in 8 bit ports so it has got four 8 bit ports they are p0 p1 p2 and p3 then uh, two 16 bit timers which i said before they are uh, named as t0 and t1 then control registers t con t mode s con p con etc the, about all these registers we will uh, discuss in detail in, the, in later classes then oscillator and closed circuits then interrupt sources etc the t con is timer control register and uh, so uh, like that uh, this they are given only abbreviation so it's enough that you read uh, write the abbreviations okay so this slide actually tells you about what is an 8051 microcontroller and what are its specifications so it is sufficient well sufficient that you write this paragraph as the introduction about 8051 microcontroller before you start writing about its architecture okay next slide this is just a block diagram to show you uh, the various components that we have discussed above is shown here see arithmetic logic unit a and b register program counter everything like that these are the three four ports that see port 0 port 1 port 2 port 3 etc if you want you can just uh, draw this um, uh, if, if it is possible i am not compelling if it is possible you can uh, draw a rough sketch of this okay uh, but it is now i think it is not uh, you won't get time to draw all these figures for exams but if possible only you can draw this now this pin diagram i think it is easy to mark see this is a pin diagram as i said it has got 40 pins see now it is numbered it has got 40 pins it has got up to 40 pins then uh, which are those pins let us see i have uh, briefed its description uh, in the left side which are the pins see the first one p10 p1 actually stands for port 1 so p10 means 
this one means port 1 bit to 0 so the next one will be port 1 bit to 1 so I think that you can write then comes RxD RxD means read data TxD means transmit data then INTO bar actually means interrupt 0 INT1 bar means interrupt 1 T0 means timer 0 T1 is timer 1 WR bar means read write stroke RD bar means read stroke then XTAL2 means crystal input 2 XTAL1 means crystal input 1 GND means ground so with that the 20 pins is over now let's start from here the next one C 21 so just as I said before what is P20 port 2 bit 0 P21 means port 2 bit 1 that is what I have written only one uh, here mm, uh, okay that you know then uh, PSCN bar PSCN bar means it is program store enable PSCN bar program store enable then A is address latch enable then EA bar means external enable then P07, P06 etc means port 0 bit 7, port 0 bit 6, port 0 bit 5 like that then uh, VCC means plus 5 volt ok so I think this pin diagram uh, it is easy to learn uh, about this board, board block diagram if it is possible only you draw this block diagram ok then here they have given the pin specifications in detail see pins 1 to 8 1 to 8 actually they are actually port 1 bit to 0 port 1 bit to 1 right so pins 1 to 8 uh, they are actually pins are known as port 1 ok that we know then uh, uh, this is um, a bi-directional input output port then pin 9 pin 9 RST see it is reset that is it uh, as the name specifies it is mainly used to reset the microcontroller to its initial values then pins 0 to 17 that I have mentioned in detail all these are certain control signals so just write the specification and expand the abbreviation then pins 18 to and 19 18 and 19 mm. uh, these pins are used for interfacing an external cycle to get the system clock ok so that is the crystal of frequency is adjusted using we already said that this microcontroller has an inbuilt uh, a clock and so in order to adjust that clock frequency we are using these pins then RD uh, WR bar we know it is write external data memory and RD bar is meant to read external data memory then pin 20 and the, that is uh, this pin provides us power supply to the circuit pins 21 to 28 as per the figure they are of port 2 and then uh, they are also input output port then uh, pin 9 we said it is PSCA that is program store enabled it is used to read a signal from external program memory pin 30 external enable uh, or it mainly stands for external access input it is used to enable or disable external memory interfacing ALE is address latch enable so it is nothing but a positive signal that is generated every time when a microcontroller starts its operation so if it is um, uh, if the if it is high that is if ALE is 1 it is it actually stands for address bus enable and when it is low that is when it is 0 it, me, it means that it is data bus enable then pins 32 to 39 as uh, from the figure we know it is port 0 all these pins are also input output port then uh, pin 40 it is the power supply to the circuit so this pin diagram is important so you can draw the pin diagram then uh, you can uh, briefly mention its specifications and write about these pin specifications by pin numbering okay i think that is easy to learn next they are describing each of the sections in detail first they are beginning with the, the oscillator and clock embedded in the 8051 so here um, I have presented the full paragraph but if you want you can make it brief or you can select the important points ok otherwise it is not possible to write all the things uh, together when this question is asked you won't get time ok so here uh, the heart of 8051 is a circuitry that generates clock pulses 
by which all internal operations are synchronized for this this microcontroller has two uh, crystal pins crystal 1 and crystal 2 they are mainly provided for connecting a resonant network to form an oscillator then uh, the circuit is shown in the figure then crystal frequency is a basic internal clock frequency of the microcontroller usually it is between uh, 1 megahertz to 16 megahertz then uh, you can adjust it either to a maximum value or minimum value mm, and for better communication uh, it is necessary that the microcontroller that you use should have an internal counter why because this internal counter will divide the basic clock frequency to uh, standard uh, to give a standard value or uh, to give a, a rate which is uh, uh, well matches for standard communications okay so if that clock frequency is not divisible then the resulting communication frequency will not be standard so that will create its own difficulty so uh, uh, the, the microcontroller that you use should have an internal counter the internal counter will divide uh, it should divide the clock frequency to a standard value okay and then this is the oscillator frequency they have represented they had divided it into six stages states and these six states together will form one machine cycle that is also indicated now here you will get some definitions that is what is pulse type that is it is a clock frequency uh, establishes a small in time of interval within the microcontroller and that is called pulse type then uh, what is machine cycle that is it is the smallest uh, the smallest interval of time to accomplish any simple instruction is called machine cycle as from the figure we know a machine cycle one machine cycle is constituted with six states now what is a state a state is the basic time interval for discrete operations of the microcontroller okay so these are the uh, definitions that you get what is pulse time what is machine cycle and what is a state now in order there is a formula to find out the time required to execute an instruction uh, that is we have to multiply the number of cycles c with the 12 and then divide the product by crystal frequency that will give you the time that is required to execute an instruction next one after clock circuit what we have to study is about the two 16 bit registers they are nothing but program counter and data pointer see they are two 16 bit registers and they are mainly used to hold or keep the address of a byte in memory now program instructions uh, are actually fetched from memory locations uh, which are addressed in the program counter and we know program ROM is usually addressed from 0000H to 0FFFH H actually stands for hexadecimal okay now uh, once uh, a, an instruction byte is fetched the program counter that is the 16 bit register it will automatically it will get incremented and it will point to the next memory location from which the data or the instruction has to be fetched okay now uh, this uh, program counter can also be altered by certain instructions uh, now uh, program counter or pc is the only register that does not have an internal address now in the other register 16 bit register is a dptr or data pointer it is made up of two 8 bit registers that is data pointer high and data pointer low dph and dpl and they are also used to get memory address for internal and external code access and therefore also for external data access okay so this data pointer is mainly specified by its 16 bit name and that we know it has got two 8-bit registers that is dph and dpl they together each of them are 8-bit registers and together they will constitute this 16-bit register data pointer now next two registers is the a and b cpu registers we know a is the accumulator okay so 8051 has 34 general purpose or working registers two of these that is register a and b comprise mathematical uh, core uh, of 8051 CPU now the other 32 are arranged in internal RAM in four banks they are bank 0 bank 1 bank 2 bank 3 that is b0 b1 b2 b3 okay and in each of these four banks you will have got 
eight registers each of them will be named as r0 to r7 now what about accumulator ea it is the most versatile registers of cpu and it is mainly used for performing many uh, mathematical operations like addition subtraction multiplication division boolean bit manipulations etc and it is also used for all data transfers between 8051 and external memory whereas b register is used with the a register for multiplication and division operations and it does not have any further function other than as location where data may be stored another important registers are flags and psw that is program status word now what are flags flags are very important they are one bit registers used to store the results of certain program instructions okay now there are various instructions to test the condition of the flag now depending upon the uh, condition of the flag status we can make our own decision okay now they are mainly uh, addressed and they are grouped inside uh, the program status word psw and pcon registers that is program control registers so the flags are arranged in uh, psw and pcon registers now our microcontroller 8051 has got four math flags that is four mathematical flags used for performing mathematical operations and they are carry uh, these math flags are carry c auxiliary carry ac and overflow flag ov and parity p so these are the four math flags of 8051 at the same time they have also got three general purpose flags or user flags they are named as f0 gf0 and gf1 and they are called general purpose flags or user flags why because they can be used by the programmer to record some event in the program now all the flags whether it is math flag or user flag they all can be set and cleared by the programmer at will okay and now the math flags however are also as affected by mathematical operations now uh, the program status word contain math flags user program flags f0 and the register select bits that identify which of the four general purpose flags is currently in use by the program so the remaining two user flags gf0 and gf1 are stored in p code that is a way in which the registers are stored okay so this paragraph is enough about flags and program status word now this is how the flags are arranged in program status word register c in the seventh bit you have the carry flag cy in the sixth bit you have the auxiliary carry flag in the fifth bit you have the user flag is zero in fourth bit you have rs1 which is the register bank select bit one in the third bit you have rs0 which is register bank select bit zero now this actually shows the status of rs1 and rs0 alone if both of them are zero it actually indicates register bank zero if one is zero the other is one this is register bank one like that then uh, the second bit contains ov which is what is that it is overflow flag okay now the first bit contains nothing and the zeroth bit actually contains p which is the parity flag okay and that's all about uh, the first half session of uh, uh, 8051 architecture so uh, i think um, all these points you have to include in your essay but here i have presented it in all paragraphs but you can, I think you can make a note of yourself, you can make it short, otherwise uh, you won't be able to adjust, uh, you won't be able to complete it within time uh, for your exams. Okay, hope you understood. Uh, so, include all these points and try to make it short. And regarding the diagrams, this diagram you can draw, uh, pin configurations and all is very easy so that you should write. If you have time, depending upon whether you have time or not, you can draw this pin diagram block diagram only if it is possible to study you can draw okay so it's better uh, based on my note you can prepare a note of yourself that is just make a brief report of this okay in your own way so that it will be easy to learn okay thank you